doesn't get more old school than three day per week full body training. In fact, in the beginning of bodybuilding, that's exclusively how guys trained. There was no body part split training invented yet. Bodybuilders didn't think of their physique in terms of body parts, but rather as one whole unit. As a result, the entire body was trained each session. This was followed by a day of rest and then repeated again roughly 48 hours later. This naturally led to a basic three-day split, usually performed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, there were many variations of the style of training, ranging from very basic, low rep strength training, like five by five on big compound movements. And then there was higher volume, more isolation bodybuilding style training. But regardless of the exercise selection or rep range, that three day full body style training, it remained up until body part split became a thing. Now I've covered some great full body routines that focused on lower rep and higher strength work. But today we're gonna cover a specific variation that was used early in the 1970s. And this one was a bit more bodybuilding specific. It included higher rep work and more isolation movements. And it was utilized at that time as more of an off-season weight gain program. This transition from an off-season three-day full body workout to a five-day more body part specific split as the contest got closer. The idea was more rest in the off-season to grow, but as calories were reduced and muscle maintenance was the goal, more frequent shorter workouts were completed. But let's jump into the exact three-day plan first. Each exercise was to be done for three sets of eight to 12 repetitions. The workout started with chest. First, we had the flat barbell bench press, followed by the incline barbell press, and then finished off with dumbbell flies. After that, it was on to back. To start this body part, dumbbell pullovers were first, followed by barbell rows, and then to complete the back were chin-ups or lat pulldowns. And after the chest and back was completed, it was then onto arms. Starting with incline dumbbell curls for biceps, the movement was then supersetted with close grip bench press for triceps. Then it was onto barbell curls and tricep press downs, concentration curls and dips. And after finishing off arms, we then would move on to shoulders. Behind the neck press or overhead press was a staple mass building exercise for the delts. Following that was the dumbbell lateral raises. And in some cases, these movements might even be supersetted. That's it for the upper body work. And before moving down to the lower body, abs were done. Direct ab work was typically done in the form of hanging leg raises or decline crunches. Now to start off lower body, it was a traditional old school barbell back squat. These were generally done for full range of motion and then followed up with partial range of motion squats. These were generally done heavier and squatting just above parallel. Now to finish off the upper legs, we had leg extensions and hamstring curls. But the workout is still not complete, believe it or not. After that, we'll be standing calf raises, dumbbell shrugs, and extra work for the forearms. That completes the entire Entire full body training session. Needless to say, this is an extremely high volume program, especially by today's standards. Now, most people looking at this will say, overtraining, overtraining, overtraining. And I say, you can say what you want. But this was literally how guys trained back then. And many of them had more impressive physiques than the optimal bodybuilding crowd today. Personally, I think that a day of training followed by a day of rest is the perfect balance of training and recovery. And it might actually be the ideal setup if rest is your main goal. But of course, it poses one major challenge, especially for stronger bodybuilders. The more weight that you push and the stronger you are, the longer these workouts will take. It wasn't uncommon for guys back then to be training like this, to be in the gym for up to three hours at a time. So naturally, if you have a busy lifestyle, things need to be changed. I'm personally a fan of training four or five days per week for mass. This allows you to make each training session shorter. Just think about it like this. If you take the total amount of work that you perform over three days, but now you perform it over four or five days, you've effectively shortened the amount of time that each session takes. And you're also spreading out that total work. So the quality of the work you do is generally gonna be higher. As in this case, you're not cramming in legs after you've completely trained the entire upper body. But don't think that by any means a three day full body split is not effective, but there are many ways to alter it to get even more out of the system. One of my favorite ways to do this is to have higher priority days. For example, just like this program, most guys literally completed the exact same workout every time they went in the gym. The same thing that they did on Monday, they would do the exact same thing on Wednesday and Friday. And personally, when I program a three-day split, I'll actually have three different workouts. And each one of them prioritizes a different body part or a goal. Monday might be a full body session, but we might actually focus on the chest. The volume might be higher for that body part. We might do more exercises or more taxing movements. The body part that's prioritized will also be trained first, and then we'll still train the rest of the body, but with a lower volume. And 
less taxing movements. On Wednesday, we'll still train the full body, but the priority might be the back. On Friday, we'll do the same thing, but for the legs. In this case, you can flip flop the order, you train legs first and the upper body second. This allows for a more balanced training split, but still keeps the traditional Monday, Wednesday, Friday full body split. And if you want the exact training plan that I personally put together for a full body three day split training, you can check out my three day mass gain training program down below. But as I always say, three, four or five day splits are generally the ones that I recommend for mass, but you should use the training program that fits your personal lifestyle, goals and preferences. And if you like this video, and if you want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.